Merchant Prince is QQP's new game of conquest, trade, and politics in 14th century Venice. Players control merchant families which seek to expand their power base by accumulating wealth, conquering cities, and manipulating political and religious elements within the city. During setup, players can be set to one of three difficulty levels, easy, average, and challenge. Each level starts with different amounts of wealth, ships, and land transports. Up to four people can play. Families not controlled by humans are automatically taken over by the computer. Computer players can be set to one of five intelligence levels. Finally, players can specify game length in years, use a historical or random map, and set the frequency of pirate activity and storms. Gameplay is straightforward. Load cargo in one city, find another city that is buying it for more money, and take it there and sell it. Don't forget to avoid pirates and storms, which can result in the loss of a ship and the valuable cargo it's carrying. Not only does the trading interface called the buy and sell screen show you what cargo you're carrying, but it tells you how much you paid for it. No more keeping notes or relying on memory to decide whether a trade is worthwhile. All the information is immediately available. The commodities screen is a mouse click away. This summarizes prices for all the trade goods in the game at all the cities you visited, as well as the quantity any given city has in stock. Looks like I want to take Ivory to Venice. Seems simple, right? Or perhaps not. In addition to trading, the menu offers a number of choices disguised as buildings in the city of Venice. Click on St. Mark's Basilica to purchase cardinals, which earn income through the sale of indulgences. Each cardinal also gets one vote when it comes time to elect a new pope. Accumulate enough cardinals, and you may find yourself in the pontiff's seat. Once there, you can exercise papal powers, such as excommunicating a city, calling down the Holy Crusade, or opening up seats for new cardinals. Click on the Doge's Palace to meddle in politics. Bribery is expensive, but it can win a senator's loyalty. Each senator gets one vote when it comes time to elect a new Doge. The Doge sets the tax rate and has the authority to appoint the council head, admiral, general, and minister of construction, each of which has its own special powers. The council head, for example, can prosecute senators for treason. Successful prosecution results in the execution of that senator, a great way to weaken rivals. In the course of exploration, some cities will be found which will not allow Venetian ships to enter. Paying an outrageous bribe to the city's rulers will allow access, but a cheaper course is to hire a band of mercenaries. Defeating a city's defenses gives the conqueror control over who has access. Giving all Venetians access will increase popularity, while denying them access can make it a valuable port to sell cargo. To improve your family's popularity, click on the clock tower from the main menu. Throwing a party, sponsoring a work of art, or donating money to the church will all increase popularity at levels corresponding to the amount of money they cost. Building a villa will improve popularity and will add 50% to all popularity gains from parties or patronage. The less savory options of intrigue have not been overlooked. From the den of iniquity, one can hire an arsonist to burn down an opponent's villa, a rumor monger to spread vicious lies about an opponent, thus making him less popular, or an assassin to eliminate key figures in the game. Be forewarned, however, their services don't come cheap, and the results of being caught in an illegal act can be devastating. A wealth of information is usually only a mouse click away. The world map, which can be accessed from either the main menu or the movement screen, shows how much of the world has been explored. One nice touch is the use of a sepia tone faux map whose accuracy degrades the further one gets from Venice. This is much more attractive than the traditional black void so common in games of this genre. To simplify trading, trade routes can be programmed. A group of ships or caravans can be assigned to pick up a commodity, travel to another city, sell it, load up on something else, and return. A route can actually encompass up to four different cities, although a profitable four-city trade route has yet to surface in our games. Once there are more than two or three ships to manage each turn, this degree of automation becomes a real sanity saver. Merchant Prince certainly has the earmarks of a great strategy sim. Several of us on the ICE production staff have become addicted to the beta version of this game and play it during every available moment. The final version, due out in February, will have even more features, such as modem implementation and play by email.